All right, all right, we're gonna get back on Isaiah there. Took a little break here because I had to move my files over. So we're gonna get back into the prophet Isaiah a little bit here as the uh, prophet continues here. So chapter 28 here, this is the prophet Isaiah now says, Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. So he's, Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet's going back into his time. He's going back into his time as he writes this now. So let's talk about the northern kingdom there. And Ephraim is kind of like the head of the northern kingdom. Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which, it, which as a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with his hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trodden under feet. And the glorious beauty, which, which is on the head of the fat, fat valley, shall be a fading flower. And as the hasty fruit before the summer, which when he that looketh toward, looketh upon it seeth, while it is yet in his hand, he eateth it up. In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of beauty, crown of glory, and for a diadem of beauty, unto the residue of his people, and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. But they also have air through wine, and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have air through strong drink, and they are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision, they stumble in judgment. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness. So that there is no place clean. For whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk, and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering tongues and with another tongue will he speak to this people. That's actually quoted in the um, in the New Testament there. In fact, we could turn there real fast there. Of course, we're reading about God's judgment on Eph Ephraim. It was kind of like the head of the northern kingdom. So let's turn to... Let me real quick here. This is just... Uh, uh, I'm just... I remember that reading that in the... Um, I believe it's on. Um, let's see. Here it is. This is talk about the spiritual gifts, and this is once about tongues here, the gift of tongues. This is chapter 14 in 1 Corinthians. Let's see. I'm going to start at uh, verse 18 here. I thank my God, this is the Apostle Paul writing this to the Corinthians. I speak with tongues more than ye all, yet in the church I rather speak five words with my understanding, that by my voice I might teach others also. Then 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. That unknown means unknown to the hearers, yeah. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that they will not hear me, saith the Lord. So. So that's actually a quotation from the prophet Isaiah there. Let's go back to Isaiah there. For what stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to this people? So we're in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11. To whom he said, 
this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is for the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that ruled his people which is in Jerusalem. So because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, and God's in all caps, so that's the Jehovah there. Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Of course, we know that's talking about Jesus there. That's sure stone, tried stone, a precious stone, a sure foundation. It's talking about the Messiah there, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's quoted in the New Testament also. As judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stain. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. For morning by morning it shall pass over, by day and by night. And it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. For the bed is, for the bed is shorter than a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than that which he can wrap himself in it. For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perizim, he shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. Now therefore be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a consumption, even determined upon the whole earth. So what is this talk about? Talk about judgment, perhaps it's talking about the um, seven year tribulation period there. It says, Give ye <coughs> give ye ear and hear my voice, hearken and hear my speech. Doth the plowman plow all day to sow? Doth he open and break the clods of his ground? When he hath made plain the face thereof, doth he not cast abroad the fitches and scatter the cumin? and cast in the principal wheat and the point, pointed barley and the rye in their place. For his God doth instruct him to discretion and doth teach him. For the fidgets are not threshed with the threshing instrument. Neither is a cartwheel turned about upon the cumin. But the fidgets are beaten out with the staff and the cumin with a rod. Red corn is bruised because he will not ever be threshing it, nor break it with the wheel of his cart, nor thresh nor bruise it with his horsemen. This also cometh forth from the Lord of hosts, which is excellent in counsel and excellent in working. Chapter 29. Woe to Ariel, Ariel, the city where David dwelt. Add ye year to year, let them kill sacrifices. Yet I will distress Ariel, and there shall be heaviness and sorrow, and it shall be unto me as Ariel. And I will camp against thee round about, and will lay siege against thee with a mount. And I will raise forts against thee, and thou shalt be brought down, and shalt speak out of the ground. And thy speech shall be low out of the dust, and thy voice shall be, as of one that hath a familiar spirit out of the ground, and thy speech shall whisper out of the dust. Moreover, the multitude of thy strangers shall be like small dust, 
and the multitude of the terrible one shall be as chaff that passeth away. Yea, it shall be at an instant suddenly. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise, with storm and tempest, and the flame of devouring fire, and the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel. And Ariel is kind of like code here for like the city of Jerusalem here. Even all that fight against her and her munition, and that distress her, shall be as a dream of a night vision. He shall even be as when an hun hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth. But when he awaketh, and his soul is empty, or as when a thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh. But he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, and his soul hath appetite. So shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. So, in other words, those who fight against Israel, Jerusalem, the Jewish people will be like, they will come to nothing. They will just be completely obliterated there, you know. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers hath he covered. And the vision of all of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. This is actually quoted in the Gospels here, this here. Actually, the Lord Jesus Christ quoted this to his own people. Let me read this again, verse 13. This is chapter 29 of the prophet Isaiah. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people. It's talking about the uh, people of Israel here. Even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not, or shall the thing framed to the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding. It is not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest, and in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall look out of obscurity and out of darkness. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off, to make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Therefore thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham, concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall not, shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. But when he seeth his children, the work of mine hands, in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name, and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding, 
and they that murmur shall learn doctrine. So it goes on here. So I'm going to leave here uh, uh, chapter 30 here. Because it continues here. So, yes, yeah, the storm keeps going on here. It's, a, it's not a good day. It's kind of cold. It's kind of very windy. I hear that wind really blowing out there. A lot of rain's coming down. It's just a low pressure system. I'm, first major winter storm, I guess, of this winter season. I mean, we had a one before, it was more, but this is more severe, I feel. So we got all this wind blowing here. So I'm staying in the Word here. Just staying in God's Word, the Bible. Okay. Okay, that's about it here, dear viewers. So God bless you. I'm going to say hi to the wife and to all my dear viewers here. And I'll be back with more fine videos just for you. So you stay tuned and support this channel too. Um, go to the description box and there's a link there and you can support this channel. So you do that. And God bless and see you again.